Relationship Talks with Erica Janelle podcast family. It's your girl, Erica Janelle. I know I look a little bit different today. I am trying out a new look. I am working on protective styles with my natural hair. So when I said, let's switch it up. It's a, it's springtime. It's going to be summer soon. Let's see what it's like to be a blonde. So I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments how you feel about it. But nonetheless, I wanted to come to you guys today with a message talking about the importance of self-love, as I always do, but more importantly, focusing on the areas of self that we need to work on while we're in preparation for a partner. And I say it all the time, and I've said it in many um, episodes before, we can only love someone as deeply as we've learned how to love ourselves. I got that from one of the tarot readers that I absolutely love, Baba Jolie. She says it all the time, and it's very, very true. We can't really learn to love other people um, until we've learned the value and the importance of loving ourselves and putting ourselves as a priority. And it's something that I know for me as a mom and at one time being a wife, I know that I usually would put everybody else ahead of me, my job, my businesses, my children, my spouse, everybody and everything would come before my needs. And how many of you guys know that if you are not happy and you are not well, then you are only being able to tap into the other roles that you play in on a limited basis. And you're not able to be your best self or show up as your best self in those areas. So for me, I've tried to make it a point to get to a place of focusing on and being intentional with working on myself and in every area, physically, financially, mentally, emotionally, um, business wise, all of the things that are important to me, I try to make that a priority. And while I'm in this phase of waiting and this single phase of life, I don't want to ever, sorry, um, I don't want to ever not lose sight of one, focusing on myself, but two, look at my spouse to be something that uh be something that i need in my life in the sense of they're fulfilling something that's void in me because how many of you guys know we are not meant to be with our partners for them to you know help us i mean they're, yes they're meant to help us but we that does not negate the fact that we should be doing some work on our own for ourselves and not looking at that, looking to that person or giving that person the power to then dictate our level of success, whether it be mentally, emotionally, financially, in any area. We should be working on self-love, self-preservation, working on developing ourselves, not self-preservation, but developing ourselves. Self-development is the better word to say. Self-development, becoming the best version of ourselves so that when we meet our spouse, Hopefully they're doing the same thing. They're working on themselves, looking at the areas of their lives where they need to improve and, and, and do some work. And then when you come together, you're coming together as two whole people now creating a, an a additional layer of success because we can do a lot of things by ourselves individually, but together we can be amazing. We can be a force. I, it, it reminds me of that song that Neo wrote um, where he talks about, you know, we're good when we're alone. We're bosses when we're alone. But when we're together, we're a force to be reckoned with. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone that has already is doing the work on themselves, just like I'm doing the work on myself. And when we come together, the person that I that God has for me we're going to be a force together because we understand that there's power and things that we can do individually, but together, when we put our minds together, there's nothing we can't accomplish. And so for me and the special person in my life, I know that that person is going to be able to be such an asset to me and I'm going to be able to be such an asset to him. And when we come together, we're going to really make an impact on this world. And so that should be our focus. So I want to talk about the importance of working on yourself. And so it's not going to be like this big, long, drawn out conversation. It's really going to be something that I think we already know, um, but it's something that's worth, it's, it bears repeating. It's worth bearing repeating because we have to learn 
that another person is not meant to rescue us or save us or, you know, we got to get out of that mindset. Um, and I'm not saying that it's, it's not just women. I feel like men are looking for women to help, you know, them make their lives easier. And it's nothing wrong with that. Yes, we want somebody that can bring peace into our lives and make our lives easier and make it not to be where we so we have to hustle and bustle so much but we have somebody to share that responsibility with but the bigger focus before you get into what that other person can bring into your life it's about what you bring into your life yourself so for me when i come when i am presented or when my person is presented to me i want to make sure that i'm the best version of myself I don't want to be somebody that is so broken and so damaged and has so much stuff to work on that I'm a project for that person. I want to be that person's peace. And so, um, you know, I talk a lot about, I mean, not often, but I've, I've talked about the person that I have a connection with. And that person, you know, for me, I feel like I bring a sense of peace to his life. And he brings a sense of peace to my life. It's not something that is said or done necessarily it's when he's around or when I'm around him I can actually feel a weight lifted off of me I'm not thinking about my problems I'm not thinking about the different situations or decisions I need to make whether it's hard decisions at work or hard decisions in the business I'm not thinking about all that stuff because that person brings me peace and in order for me to be able to get peace from that person it means that that person has had to work on themselves to a certain extent to where they're not bringing in extra drama or problems or situations for me they're bringing peace to me and that's what i want so i am a single woman by the way um but as a single woman it's important to me to make sure that everything that i'm bringing into a new relationship or something that is newly developing that i am able to bring my a game in other words i'm working on my mental health i go to therapy every week i have a coach you know i am a coach but i actually get coaching as well i actually go to therapy as well even though i've done a lot of work in the past i go to therapy every week even if everything is perfect and it's mainly because i look at my therapy as my maintenance plan just like you have a maintenance plan for your car therapy is my maintenance plan for my mental health and the same thing with coaches. There are certain subjects and things and situations that we can tackle in coaching that I may nece not necessarily be able to tackle in therapy. So I know that when, whatever, when God presents the person to me, whether it's the person that I have a connection with or whether it's somebody else, um, when God presents that person to me, I know that I am doing the work to become the best version of myself. So when I show up in that relationship, I'm showing up as the best version and the best person that I can be. Now, does that mean I'm perfect? Absolutely not. But does that mean that I'm actually working toward becoming the better version of myself? Absolutely. And that's what we're talking about here. So whatever that looks like for you because for each of us it's individual for each of us that may look very different some people may have it together financially some people may have it together in their career but what they're missing is self-control or consistency um or discipline so if i know that financially i'm together career-wise i'm together business-wise i'm together emotionally even i'm together but i lack discipline meaning i don't I don't discipline myself to put the right foods in my body or I don't discipline myself enough to go to the gym consistently or work out however I want to work out. If I know that discipline is something that I'm lacking, that should be an area that I focus on. So what I want you guys to do is take a real authentic examination of your life. And when I say authentic, meaning you're not trying to cut sugarcoat or make excuses. You actually look at these areas of your life where you see, okay, I'm great in this, but this is some area where I really feel like I am struggling a little bit. I need to work a little harder because we all have things that we should be striving towards or working towards every day. Like there is not ever going to be a time where I can honestly say, okay, I am completely everywhere I want to be in everything because there's always going to be work to do. I think as long as we're on this earth and as long as we have breath in our bodies, there are going to be things that we can work on to become better. And so... Think about those areas, examine, like really, really take a, 
a real inventory of yourself. You know you better than anybody. You know you better than your mama knows you. You know you better than your children know you. You know you better than your spouse knows you. Your friends know you. Your siblings know you. You know you better than anybody. Take a real time to examine where you are in your life and see the areas where you know you can improve. And where you realize you can make improvements or adjustments, make those adjustments. Because at the end of the day, nobody's expecting perfection. We all are going to come to the table with flaws and, and challenges and childhood trauma and, and, you know, areas where we need to improve. However, you give yourself a more fighting chance or winning chance to be able to be successful when you know you're, you're self-aware. Because a lot of people walk and exist in this earth without any level of self-awareness. They don't know where they, they, they fall short. So they'll go into relationship after relationship after relationship with the same issues. And, they, and that cycle continues until they take an inventory of themselves and, and become aware of what the challenges may be that they may be facing and then they can start to adjust it. So I'm trying to give us the tools and the, and the tips that we need to get there before we wait for things to become crazy, okay? So don't wait for everything to get to the point where it's like, oh my God, we're already at each other's throat. I didn't realize that I had trust issues. Think about the things that you have. We all have stuff. So we've all come from a place of trauma at some point, whether it's from your childhood, whether it's from a past relationship, whether it's from your mama, your siblings, your school being bullied in school, whatever those traumas are that, that makes you function the way that you function, be willing to take a real look and a keen eye to those specific areas. If you can do that, I think you are 1,000 steps ahead of a lot of people because a lot of people just stay stuck in where they are. They've come to the point where they don't want to do any work and they are just content with being average or mediocre. And you guys know me. That's never going to be me. I'm never going to be okay with being average. I don't want to look average. I don't want to talk average. I don't want to think average. I don't want to be average. I always want to stand out because God created us as unique individuals. We're not meant to fade to the background and just be like everybody else. We're meant to have our own specific mark that we are supposed to make. And that mark may be different for you as it, 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 different from for you than it is for me. But regardless of what that mark looks like, we are supposed to always show up as our our authentic selves and for me that is a priority at this point in my life at almost 45 i'll be 45 this year i cannot wait i'm super excited at almost 45 what i've learned from my past marriages and being younger and even in relationships that i've had even you know after my divorces and after all of the things the relationships that i had i learned something from each and every one of them and for me as I've grown and I've developed and I've learned, instead of being angry when things don't work out, I've now kind of changed my perspective. So now my perspective is I'm not angry that things didn't work out. I look at it as a learning lesson. So it's different levels to this and it's different layers to this. So what I've learned from my previous relationships, now I can go back into whatever my future or my current situation is and I can apply that knowledge from what I've learned. Okay. Excuse me. So if I know that I can be quick tempered, then I need to learn how to scale that back. If something is irritating me, I need to communicate it quicker. And then I need to walk away when I feel myself getting angry. Like those are little tips and tricks. And it could be something different for each of us. We all are individuals. So we're all unique. But whatever that thing is that you can actually work on now, take this time of singleness, take this time of being by yourself instead of being pressed to find somebody, focus that energy internally and focus that energy on what you can do to become the best version of yourself. Because I can guarantee you, no matter what, if you focus your energy on you, whether, you, whether it takes you a year, two years, six months, three months, one month, two weeks to find your person, you will still be ahead of the game or ahead of the curve because that's something that people don't want to do. People don't want to go to places that are uncomfortable. But I say it all the time in my personal life. I say it to my coaching clients and I'm saying it to you today. Complacency is a st equals stagnancy. It means you're not growing 
and you're not going anywhere. You're staying the same. Why would we want to stay the same? We're on this earth, we're on this earth and given life to be able to grow and expand and advance. I apologize for the sirens in the background. We're just gonna let them pass. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, so I just want you guys to focus your energy on not staying the same, not staying in your comfort zone. How many of you know that comfortable, it's cool for a moment, but it's not meant for you to stay comfortable. And either you're gonna do things to shake your trajectory up or life is going to shape up your shake up your trajectory i'd rather be the one to control the trajectory than to have life throw me a bunch of curveballs that i can't necessarily handle or i feel like i can't handle because i wasn't prepared for them so life is full of ebbs and flows and we go through things we evolve we should be evolving i'm gonna say we should be evolving because i can't take for granted that everybody's doing the work because let's be honest sorry i came out of camera Cheers to everyone. I am, I just finished cooking. I just made some lamb with some red wine reduction. So this is my red wine that's left over. So cheers to you guys. But what I wanted to say was, you guys have to realize that you can stay the same and stay in your same frame of mind, but that means you're not growing. Just like you think you're staying in that same place to protect yourself, it's the same thing that you're doing to stunt your growth. And we should be growing. Every day, we should be striving to be better. I should be a ve better version of myself today than I was yesterday. I should be a better version of myself tomorrow than I was today. And the bottom line is, if we don't take the time and actually put the intentional focus and effort into becoming a better version of ourselves, we're going to see us attracting the same type of people. And this is what I don't want. I still believe in relationships. I still believe in marriage. It's a passion of mine. God called me to help people keep the faith for relationships. Even though I am not experiencing the fullness of what I could experience in relationships, I know it's out there. I know it exists. It's so heavy in my spirit that I can't shake it. But in order for me to be able to really tap into the best version of what that relationship will look like for me it's me bringing the best version of myself into that relationship am i going to be perfect absolutely not am i going to get it all right absolutely not but i am still going to show up as the best version of me to do the best job i can do to help myself show up in the best way that i can and even when i don't get it right i know that i came authentically as myself doing the best job i can do to get where i needed to get to and so as we are growing, as we are learning, as we are developing, don't be afraid to go to the scary, spooky places in life. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. Don't be afraid to do something that's outside of your comfort zone because your comfort zone is meant to keep you stagnant. Yes, it's comfortable for a reason, but don't you want more? Like, I want more. I want more impact. I want more success i want more love i want more ways to share and express my love i don't ever want to just stay stuck with what i've already had because that means i'll, I'll only go to, to this point that's the stopping point when i get complacent that means that's where i stop there is no more growth there is no more opportunities to grow there is no more anything because i become now my own stumbling block and so we have to be aware self-aware enough to realize that we can be sometimes our worst enemies. Let's get to the point where we change that narrative and let's change the way that we think about relationships and change the way that we think about love and, and, and wanting love. It's not a bad thing to desire love. I desire to be married. I desire it. Even though I had failed marriages, it does not mean that marriage doesn't work. It just means marriage didn't work for me and those people. But the whole concept of marriage is not bad. I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater just because maybe the bathwater is dirty. You don't throw the baby out when you throw out the bathwater. So why throw out the whole concept of marriage or relationships because you've had bad experiences. At some point, you've got to take some level of responsibility for what you've done in those relationships, whether it could be uh, ignoring the red flags, whether it could be tolerating behavior that you knew was not acceptable to you, but because you were afraid of losing that person, you stood there and you stayed in it. Whatever it is, 
it's different for all of us, but we've all been there where we stayed in situations that weren't good for us. We've all been in situations that were not the best for us, but we tried so hard to make it work, just forcing it. We've got to stop changing. We got to start changing that and do something different in order to have something different. So that's all this message simply is today is just to remind you guys, it always starts with self. Until you learn how to truly and authentically love yourself in the way that you deserve to be loved, you will never be able to love somebody else in the way they deserve to be loved because it starts with self. I can't love you more than I love me. And so I tell my clients, the same things that you want your mate to do for you, do for yourself. And I practice it myself. So if I want a person to date me and I want a person to, to, to woo me and win me and, and, um, you know, treat me with respect and reverence and somebody that's considerate of me, I do those things for myself. So I take myself out. I, I've told you guys many times, I take myself out once a week. I set the bar for what I want to receive. If I want somebody that shows me attention and affection and love and, 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 and is intentional with the way they love me on me, I do it for myself because I set the pace. I set the tone for how I want to be treated. So if somebody sees me out and about and I'm at dinner at a nice restaurant and I'm eating good and I'm enjoying myself by myself and they see me and they observe me in that environment and my level of comfortability with myself, then that is attractive and intriguing, intriguing to that person because they know that you're not, they're not, you're not looking to them to be what, what you need. You're looking at yourself to be all of the things that you need for yourself. And that person just adds to you. And so we've got to get out of the mindset of looking for a person to be everything, be our end all be all. That person is supposed to add to what we already have. So when a person sees me out at dinner and I'm eating a lobster dinner with a, a glass of, uh, of expensive wine, then they know that I'm treating myself the way that I deserve to be treated. Therefore, you know that if you're going to date me, you're going to have to do certain things to treat me the same way that I would treat myself. If I go and I go out to take myself out of the country and just take a vacation and I do and I live my life then you know that if that's the way, if that's the standard I set for myself, then that's something that you should be wanting to do and willing to do. And, and that's all I'm saying. We set the pace for how people treat us, whether good, bad, or indifferent. We choose what we will tolerate and what we don't tolerate. If we allow a person to walk all over top of us and disrespect us and treat us like trash, then why would we expect anything different when they do that? We can't treat ourselves like trash anymore. We've got to value ourselves. So start with the small things. It may not be that you can take yourself out on an expensive date, but what you can do is spend some time with yourself. Even self-care, if it means going outside and going walking for 30 minutes, just to get yourself some mental energy time where you're focusing on yourself. You're not being a mom. You're not being a dad. You're not being a husband, a wife. You're not being you know, an a employee or a business owner. At that moment, you're just focusing on you, whatever that looks like. It doesn't mean you have to spend money. I come home sometimes and I just do my own pedicure just because. Not that I can't go to the salon and get a pedicure done, because I can. But sometimes I just do it for myself just to love on myself. Or sometimes I'll go and I will just, you know, just go outside and just spend some time by myself doing bun a bunch of nothing. I'll go on a hike just to be out with nature and just to be in communication with God and just to develop that relationship and keep developing that relationship. That's important to me. So find what those things are with you for you. If it means curling up in the corner with a book and it's 30 minutes that you dedicate to yourself, not with the kids, not with your family, not with your friends, but just you with yourself. Sitting with yourself is important, guys. It's nothing wrong with being comfortable with you. If you're not comfortable with you, how in the world is somebody else going to be comfortable with you? We have to get to the place where it's not looked at negatively when we do things for ourselves. It's okay. You don't have to feel guilty because you took yourself out for ice cream. So what? Yes, you may not eat ice cream every day because you're watching what you eat to be a good steward over this temple that you've get, been given. However, if you want to treat yourself to that and that makes you feel good, do it. If reading a book makes you feel good, do it. 
is staying at home under your blanket and watching movies and uh, binging your favorite series is what you need to do to get your mental health where it needs to be, do it. But what I want you to say is your person, your spouse, your mate is going to be there to compliment you. So until you really get comfortable with you and until you really love on you, nobody else is really going to be able to add to you. So I hope this message blessed you. I, I didn't want to sound preachy, but I say it all the time, but I, I really don't think that we are intentional enough with our own self-care practices. And it doesn't mean just getting your nails done or getting your hair done or doing the things that you do. Self-care is so much more than that. It could be just practicing mindfulness. It could be sitting there for 10 minutes and just meditating in silence, just thinking and thanking God for where he's blessed you or sitting there and doing some yoga for yourself or doing some meditation or doing some um, speaking some manifestations over your life and what you want to see in your life, what you want to see in your mate, whatever that looks like for you. I want you guys to do it. I encourage you. I love you guys. I will see you guys next week. Have an amazing week, everyone. Bye.